and uh, I want to thank you all for being here and to the show for organizing such a wonderful, wonderful function here to honor community leaders, to honor poets, to honor people who create such wonderful things in their lives. It's, it's just amazing to hear the words and what play these words can have just by rearranging the words that we speak every day. You bring so much meaning to things. It's just amazing to see that. Um, I would like to take a brief opportunity to give you a glimpse into uh, my mother's life. On whom uh, her picture is back here, and what I'll do is use a few slides just to give you a quick picture about her. And what I'll do, I'll move the podium to the side so that everyone can see the slides. Okay, so um, so my mother was um, a uh, person of you know a, a, an amazing personality. She had a um, a very very um, a life full of multiple events that shaped her personality, that shaped who she was. And again, it's not easy to summarize someone's life in five minutes, but I'll attempt to do a little bit of that. So if you can go to the next slide. So she was born uh, in 1944, 23rd April 1944, eldest of three siblings. Um, she went to the Armed Forces Medical College uh, in India where she did her medical schooling. Uh, she married um, my father who was then a captain uh, in the Indian Army um, on 10th December 1967. He came from a large conservative family uh, in Punjab, state in India. Um, my uncle, my dad, there were uh, there are ten siblings, um, eight brothers and two sisters, and large family. Uh, she had two sons. I'm here standing in front of you, and my younger brother who lives in India. Uh, she joined the Indian Army, rose to the rank of a colonel, and took honorable retirement in 1992 to devote her time full-time to social service. Um, she was a benefactor of many, and I just show, show you a very old picture of hers when she was very young, probably in her early 20s. Um, I think this was the picture when she was just entering medical school. Um, these are some of the early days. Um, I love the picture on the left, you know. Um, I always tell my wife, I wish we had a studio picture like them. No one takes these pictures anymore. They had these pictures taken, you know, the day after their marriage. Um, these were all black and white in those days. And that's one of her earlier pictures, you know, in, in medical school. Fashions go and come back, I, we tell people, you know, things were old fashioned clothes at that time. Now this is back again in new fashion. But she was, again, a wonderful, a jo joyful, and a, a person who was alive, full of life. On the next slide, you'll see her dressed in um, the, the uniform that women, the doctors in the Indian army wear. So it's a sari, like all Indian women wear saris. But as you can see, she's standing on your right, and um, the, uh, the letters are a bit hard to read on her shoulder. They say AMC, which stands for Army Medical Corps. And um, she, this was her, her usual dress. She's standing with one of my aunts, and you know, it's, it's hard to imagine how women in India can be so active with, you know, yards and yards of cloth tied around them, but they do that. They do that very effectively in the heat of the summer. Um, so on the next slide, you'll see what, which I call one of my favorite pictures. This is, you know, I used to, I used to joke with her. I used to say, wow, you're stylish for your times. You had, you had these, uh, you know, this, this wonderful dress. And uh, there's a little boy there standing looking up to her, and that would be me. <laughs> and, and you know, that was me throughout my life. I used to just look up to her for everything. It was just amazing how she, with her life, with what she did, just set an example for all of us, especially for myself, my brother, and everything she did. She was just an example, and that's, that just reminds me of you know, my life, just looking up to her and, and, and just being, you know, uh, so awed by her and everything she did. Uh, she was um, a person who had an infectious laughter. On the next slide you'll see um, one of our 
own family pictures in 1982. This was just me and my brother, my father. We they were posted in in, in the, the mountains in India, and she was very fond of gardening. She was fond of you know with with her her work to do so many other things, gardening, taking care of kids. She would go out and you know find kids who had no clothes, no food to eat, and just go and and you know just randomly help people. That's all she did. Um, and on the next slide, you can see that. She loved to enjoy time with the family. On the right picture there is a picture of a train station in India. Catching a train in India can be quite a chaotic experience. Okay, and you can see on the right that that's a train platform with, with just people, loads and loads of people there. And, and you know, she would go there, you can see some person sitting on the ground, she, some person in the back. She would just, you know, take some extra food with her when we went to the train and just give food to people and say, well, here, have a meal. It looks like you haven't eaten in a while. Okay, well, you can see my uncle Ashok, my aunt Ida, and they have Neil sitting there. They were all on their visits to India. Just had had a great time with her, going all over the country. And on the next slide, you'll see her enjoying some of the lighter moments. She had an infectious laughter, as I said. She would just light up the room when she entered. She would just you could hear her laugh from across the room. That's one of the things that I I really miss. Just hearing her laughter. Just hearing who she was uh, here in this middle picture with my father, just having a, you know, on one of our family vacations and, and with all of us over the years. Um, so, you know, it, it's been, it's been, you know, it's, it's a bittersweet moment for me. You, in moments like this, you, you remember your mother, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a very, very close bond um, and some, something that, you know, I miss a lot. She has, um, been such an inspiration that you know that's something that that I will carry forward through my life. And on the next slide, um, I just wanted to share a couple of like two quotes from the, the Bhagavad Gita, which is a very you know a holy book uh, for uh, for the Hindu religion. Uh, Bhagavad Gita is which summarizes the, uh, the the teachings given by the Lord, the Lord Krishna, to. Um, to Arjun, who was sitting in a chariot, driving him to the battlefield. And when Arjun sees his extended family in front of him, and he was supposed to fight them, he, he gets weak. He says, I can't do it. And the Lord explains to him that, you know, the, it's, it's in Sanskrit on the top, that, that's how it translates when you read it. It just says, Nat to vaham jatunasam, nat to neme janadipa, na chayiv na bhavishyam, which translates to never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. So this, that's the, the Hindu teaching that the soul is eternal and we, and we carry on. And in the next uh, verse, uh, just again, continuing on the same thought, uh, I won't read the verse, but just look at the meaning. As the embodied soul continually passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. A sober person is not bewildered by such change. So it's a continuum. Life is a continuum. That's what the Hindu philosophy teaches us. And that's what I take solace from, that you know, it was a life well lived, a life where I had the good fortune of having her as my mother and, and having her in, in my life as my inspiration, my teacher in so many ways. And on the next slide, just to show you my grandfather, who's still, <coughs> that is her father, who still lives in India. He's uh, in his mid-90s, and um, he has been instrumental to many of us uh, in, in all these teachings. He is a writer himself, a philosopher. This is the cover of a book that my uncle Ashok wrote with him, uh, a philosophy and poetry of Colonel Semaram, a colonel of truth. Uh, he was, again, a colonel in the Indian Army. And on the next slide, he just sent a short message. He couldn't be here. He doesn't travel a lot these days. But uh, I just want to play a quick message for him. It'll just take a few seconds. I, Shivaram, father of late Dr. Asha Bhagavan, take this gracious opportunity to remember her. She was the eldest child and joined the army to serve as a doctor. By serving in the Army Medical Corps. She showered her tender love to all the patients. She wore a less. 
behave as mother to all who came to her. I miss her a lot because I lost a great help in the family. I am very happy that Dear Ashok has started an award in our name. I wish the award winner all the best. May God bless you to remain prayerful to the blissful. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Martin, thank you very much for, for the honor and the privilege of being here. We can uh, advance to the last slide, which is again one of the pictures that I always love to keep in my mind of her. Smiling, joyous, and that's how I want to remember her. That's what, That's how I would like you all to remember her as well. Thank you again.